good evening everyone my topic is on uh, oct so coming to principle of oct it is based on michelson in, in uh, interferometry so it is analogous to ultrasound v scan where the distance information is extracted from the time delays in of the reflected signals so a low time coherence light source uh, the beam uh, passes through a beam splitter it uh, uh, forms a reference beam uh, and uh, uh, probe beam so when uh, these are reflected back these are taken by a photo detector and uh, this is uh, uh, processed into a electrical signal and then uh, uh, with the uh, back reflection or the scattering uh, the uh, image is formed uh, this was uh, in the time domain oct so in the spectral domain oct uh, the point uh, uh, detector was replaced by the uh, spectrometer so in this, there is no need of mechanical scanning of the optical uh, path length. Uh, and the swept source OCT, the broad width uh, light was uh, replaced by a narrow uh, line width, uh, which uh, sweeps uh, over uh, different uh, wavelengths. Uh, coming to 3D imaging, 3D area uh, scans can be found by combining the uh, B scans. Uh, 20,000 to 26,000 A scan can be found by the uh, swept source OCT which are combined to form a linear B scan, uh, which can be further, uh, multiple linear B scans can be combined to form a 3D area scan, which can be manipulated and viewed from multiple angles. As we can see here, uh, there is a subretinal fluid, uh, pigment epithelium uh, detachment, and the contour of the retina is changed here. Uh, coming to indications of OCT, uh, anti segment OCT can be uh, used in uh, cases like cornea-based uh, refractive surgery, such as LASIK, we can see the flap uh, thickness here it is around one eight, uh, in the range of 180 to 90 microns and the residual uh, base is uh, 300 to 350 microns uh, then in corneal transplantation cases in d we can see the donor uh, tissue uh, size uh, the thickness and here uh, this is a case of a deep uh, anterolamellar keratoplasty where uh, dissection is performed till only the uh, 25 microns is left uh, coming to monitoring of uh, decimal memory detachment, here uh, this is a case of uh, post cataract surgery uh, where on the first day there was DMD, uh, which resolved on its own till uh, two weeks. Uh, we can visualize eccentric ectatic cornea uh, in cases of uh, keratoconus or other corneal ectatic diseases. As we can see here, the contour is changed and there is a, a thinning of the uh, cornea. Uh, in fakic IOLs, uh, the anti-segment OCT can be used to measure uh, measure the vault size. Here we can see the uh, distance between the uh, posterior uh, part of the fakic IOL and the anterior, uh, the natural lens, the, it has increased. So over vaulting is there in this case. And in another case, there is a very narrow vault. Uh, coming to applications in glaucoma, we can see that uh, uh, we can appreciate the narrow angles here. We can see a patent PI a functional uh, bleb can be seen. Uh, the patency of the uh, amoth glaucoma valve can be seen in this uh, image. According to posterior segment OCD, uh, various vitro retinal uh, interface uh, defects can be seen. Uh, as we can see here, a vitro uh, macular traction is there, changing the contour of the fovea. Here we can see a peritoneal membrane uh, with a pseudo-hole formation. Here in this image, we can see a full thickness macular hole. Uh, we can see diseases involving the uh, retinal architecture, dry, uh, wet AMD OCT can be used. Here we can see uh, accumulation uh, drusens in uh, between the RP and Brooks membrane. Uh, here, uh, this is a case of uh, neovascular AMD. Uh, and this is a long-standing case where we can see uh, ret uh, retinal uh, atrophy. RP atrophy can be appreciated. Uh, it can be used in diabetic macular edema cases where we can see cystoid spaces and uh, accumulation of uh, subretinal fluid. Can be uh, used in cases uh, of uh, venous occlusion where we can see edema in this uh, case. Uh, central is uh, uh, serous chorioretinopathy. We can see uh, accumulation of subretinal fluid. Uh, we can see thickening of the uh, choroid in an acute uh, CSR case. Uh, we can uh, also uh, have the optic nerve head and uh, retinal nerve fiber uh, layer evaluation in cases of glaucoma. Going to recent advances in OCT, uh, uh, with the change of the a uh, change in the optics, we can uh, have uh, different uh, benefits. Like uh, visible light uh, can be used instead of uh, uh, 
uh, near infrared uh, light where uh, the because of less wavelength the resolution will improve uh, here we can see the uh, uh, difference between the images of the two visible light and the near infrared light adaptive optics uh, in oct uh, will quantify and eliminate higher order uh, monochromatic aberrations uh, with the help of wavefront sensors and correctors so uh, it can have a uh, resolution up to 2 microns here we can see different images of the various uh, layers of uh, retina uh, polarization sensitive oct uh, here uh, it works as uh, the on the polarization state of the back scattered light and measuring uh, birefringence in the tissue samples so automated segmentation of structures such as rp can be done here we can see uh, there was uh, not uh, much difference in uh, these two images uh, both could detect the uh, atrophy area but uh, in this another case uh, the polarized uh, oct was able to detect the rp atrophy area better than the uh, normal one higher uh, the uh, resolution of oct can be increased with increasing the bandwidth of the oct light source Going to full field uh, OCT and dynamic uh, full field OCT. Full field uh, OCT forms two two uh, D and phase scans of ocular tissue at different depths to re uh, then it can reconstruct three uh, D volumetric images for up to uh, resolutions up to one micron. So especially uh, helpful in seeing the human uh, retinal ganglion cell axons. Uh, dynamic uh, OCT is a, a derivative of uh, full field OCT where backscattered light from subcellular uh, structures. can be uh, seen in uh, seen in motion, motion as in these images we can see the movement of uh, axon with time uh, according to wide field and ultra wide field oct we will increase the uh, field of view of the uh, oct uh, wide field being uh, 40 to 55 degrees and ultra wide field up to 200 degrees here this is a study in which 90 diopter lens was used to uh, increase the uh, field of view of the uh, retina so it will help you enhance depth scan and image the uh, curved contour of the peripheral ret uh, retina so uh, ls uh, jp had described the uh, use of uh, intraoperative uh, oct in cases such as uh, dmac dsec uh, uh, membrane peeling choroidal uh, renal biopsies etc this was a image uh, taken by the uh, uh, intraoperative uh, oct Uh, at home ocd can be used for uh, home screening uh, one of them uh, is nortal uh, vision uh, home ocd so this is a, a difference between uh, comparison between the commercial uh, ocd and the home based uh, ocd so uh, for uh, screening it is a good tool so in conclusion ocd is a non invasive technique uh, where it provides a high resolution cross section images of the retina and the fiber layer and optic nerve layer It is based on Michelson interferometry. The advances by changing the optics, introduction of intraoperative OCT and, and at-home OCT, etc., provides for a, a better understanding of pathogenesis, improved monitoring of progression, and assistance in quantifying response to uh, treatment modalities in diseases of the eye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Avnit. Over to the panel. Uh, Avnit, uh, uh, good presentation, comprehensive uh, uh, answer. see so I, i just want to know again like uh, um, where where does this uh, uh, use of dynamic oct come in so in the retinal ganglion cell axons uh, particularly they had uh, said that uh, it is useful sir no uh, you uh, mean the the practical use you you actually uh, mentioned it then uh, uh uh in your slides so those drug driven studies and all yes sir yes sir okay okay thank yes, you sir. can you unshare the screen and answer the questions dr avnit yes ma'am So, Avnit, what is uh, where would you use a, a UBM uh, with respect to uh, ASOCT? How does a UBM uh, differ from an ASOCT? I mean, in where, when would you want to use a UBM? So, when media opacities are there, and uh, we cannot see the uh, the light cannot pass through and reach the retina, sir. 
Yeah, the depth with an ASOCT is less. When you want to see behind the iris, you want to see the ciliary body, then you would want to use a, a UVM as compared to a, a ASOCT. Yes. Good presentation. Thank you, sir. Dr. Shailaja, do you have any questions for him? No, no, no questions. Good presentation. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Avinath.